it's a video game show it's a video game show it's not a game show about videos it's a video game show Welcome to the GamerCast Network Video Game Show for Friday, March 9th, 2007. This week for the roll call, when I say your name, tell me your most hated video game character. And joining us is Ivan. Alright, those little masked tiki hoppy things in Diablo 2. You know which one I'm talking about. Phil? I'd say Yoshi. How can you hate Yoshi? Okay, fine. It's just annoying. And joining us this week is Microsoft's own Xbox Community Manager, Chris Palladino. Yo, uh, I was going to say originally the Avatar from PS3 Home. That that might be my new most <laughs> hated video game character. No, actually, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big hater of uh, Eddie Goro from Tekken because he's just so cheap. Just mash buttons and he just wins, so... My most hated video game characters were the little flea men from Castlevania. Oh, yeah. They got on my nerves. In GamerCast Network community news, check out Podtacular episode 104, where they talk about the Xbox Live Arcade. In Uncle Gamer Radio episode number 21, Vicious and Liquid Life are joined by Nelson and Natalie from Achievement Junkies, where they talk about the Sony and Kotaku incident from last week. And check out Gamertag Radio episode number 88, where Godfrey interviews the staff of ControlFreak.com and the design director of the Oblivion expansion, Shivering Isles. Finally, we're extending the video game show Emilio giveaway contest. It's extended by one week and ends on March 15th. Be sure to check out the website for all the details at www.gamercastnetwork.com. Next topic. Game Developers Conference that was recently held in San Francisco. Microsoft's own Chris Palladino. A lot of emphasis Microsoft put into XNA, which for those not in the know, XNA is kind of the hobbyist uh, way to create video games that can be played on your PC and on your 360. At the GDC, you guys had a little contest going on, didn't you? Yeah, so there was an XNA contest, and what the goal was was to have folks come down for four days of GDC and start a video game from scratch, and then at the Thursday night XNA party they were going to unveil these video games and people could play them and it actually worked really really good four games were dungeon quest which is like a 3d really really nice looking dungeon crawler kind of in a first person third person style simian escape where you're this like 2d platformer where you're jumping uh, damage control one of the community guys on NeoGAF, he would give them the graphic that he had a placeholder and somebody would take it and they would fix the graphic to look prettier and give it back to him and they helped do things like name it or so it was really cool to watch them get involved. So how many giant phalluses did he get? <laughs> they were actually really good. I don't know if it was just that everybody is nerdy enough to get it or what, but all the games are available for download. You can go to uh, dreambuildplay.com, and you can actually download these titles and play them on your PC. We have screenshots and stuff up on Gamerscore blog. Um, the fourth game that's coming out is called Abducts, which is crazy because the dude incorporated speech recognition into it. So you're a UFO. And you move around and you uh, use your tractor beam to suck people up into your spaceship. And I would assume experiment on them. And the sound effects, you know, when you suck people up, the people scream. It's a very morbid kind of game. <laughs> These guys whooped all this stuff out in merely four days. So they're also not graphic artists. So the majority of them have kind of graphics that do the job and the sound effects do the job. But it was more of a thing to say, look... If you have a little bit of knowledge of what's going on, because some of these guys are hobbyists. These are not professional game designers. But the winner's going to get a, a gentleman's handshake to try and get his game on Xbox Live Arcade. And the reason I say gentleman's handshake is because you guys know all the politics involved and legal and everything else. But the goal is to take this winner's game and put it on Live Arcade somehow. That's cool. And what else did Microsoft announce at the GDC? They upped the size of Live Arcade from 50 megs to 150 megs. There was an awful lot of feedback that people were saying, oh, 50 megs is too little. I don't necessarily agree because I haven't seen anything that was severely limited by the amount of size that something was going to be. Which you means I hear Castle Crashers is delayed by a year because they now think they can squeeze more stuff in. I heard that. The lead guy from Behemoth, who also did Alien Hominid, said that you know they were going to push the game back into 2008 to try and get more stuff in. I don't know the details of it. I think the, the whole game plan of the 50 megs originally was you want Live Arcade to be a seamless experience so that when you jump in and you want to start playing your game, if you don't even have it downloaded, you could say, oh, cool, Alien Hominid. You could hit the go button and then 
a minute or less later, you're actually playing the game. Right. I thought connection. one of the driving forces was also the fact that people who don't have hard drives would be able to fit them on a uh, 50 meg memory card. That is another huge reason for the 50 megabyte limits is because you could put it on. So kind of in conjunction with the 50 megabyte increase to 150, a new memory card size has been announced. So there's now a 512 megabyte memory card. Next topic. Joining us this evening is internet famous PlayStation 3 destroying brand song, <laughs> Doc, <laughs> a.k.a. Rainmaker from our forums. And Doc, what is your most hated video game character? Oh, the bad guy on... Uh... Metal Gear Solid, Ocelot. Next topic. At the GDC, Sony's own Phil Harrison introduced finally to the world a Sony Home, which is their whole concept of bringing together virtual avatars, having the achievements in game in this whole social world you can walk around also you're able to personalize yourself with some things you can buy and i noticed one of the items they actually had you actually have pets oh, um, no a- no i i don't care i don't want to walk around and watch people dancing and and spewing obscenities at me well hey, now now hold on okay well to be on the on the obscenities thing they did say they're going to have some parental controls in here oh, boy. great so instead of f-u-c-k-y-o-u they'll find unique ways of spelling words you know if, if for some reason a free playstation 3 drops out of the sky and i end up becoming a playstation 3 owner and then i go into this i think i'd like if i'm going to have my own home i think i'd like to have a crack house number one on the list of things of why this is stupid and Exactly like Second Life. How is this not going to turn into just a large sex chat? Well, as room? they said, as they said, they're going to try and put in some parental controls. Also, another thing they mentioned was that you're going to be able to turn off avatars. So if, if Gimp number one is coming at you, you're going to be able to say, click, <laughs> Gimp number one goes away. <laughs> Dude, if Gimp number one is coming at you, you got more problems than turning them off. If any of you have read more about this, I, I think there's also an, like, some sort of achievement ripoff as well, where they're going to, instead of achievement points, you're going to have a trophy case at your house. The idea is when you have a, when you sign up for the account, you're going to be given a virtual apartment, if you will, where you have part of your apartment is set up in this like, like trophy thing where you can actually have people come in and see the trophies you've won from certain games. Yes, there is no like gamer score, but you're going to be getting, when you, when you kill the badass in game X, you're going to be given this trophy saying, hey, look, he killed badass. You know, this just sounds like a whole lot of extra work. You have to have them over. You have to say, come over here to the trophy case. And then they have to go and look at the trophy case. Whereas friends can just pull up my gamer card and look and say, oh, okay, You will be yeah. able to pull up the same information in a list, in a 2D format, rather than having to go through this social virtual den of gimps. I could not care less about the entire thing. But to be fair, though, I mean, it doesn't. It looks like it was. It's not something that they just whooped up in thirty seconds. There had been uh, some notes on, I guess, some of the uh, PlayStation boards that they've been in development with this project for about two years. Guys, I want to play a video game. I want to turn on my PlayStation Three. I want to find my friend Fred, and I want to go kill him. You know, I don't want to have to go to Fred's apartment and ring the doorbell, (laughs) and then Fred wants to show me a stupid trophy case because he got the high score in, you know, Sonic, and then. Eventually, go play a game. Well, I'm I'm actually surprised. I have to admit, I've I've gotten an awful lot of kind of wow, holy craps. I was just wait, 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 wait. Wow, holy craps about what? Like wow, holy crap, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. It's better than nothing, I guess. You know, <laughs> Xbox has got their it's gamer not worth score. Six hundred dollars. And... No, well, that's my point. If you have the PlayStation, I would be pissed if they didn't have something, but. Even then, if I had the PlayStation, why am I going to want to play Sims on my PlayStation 3 every time I want to look to see what kind of achievements I've got? I think you're going to be able to interact with it in a way that's not just That's my this point. Thing. I don't want to interact with, with my game data. I, I want a spreadsheet. I, I want a list. <laughs> that, I, yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow, I didn't know spreadsheet that's jokes funny. that funny. <laughs> no, it's the game. I don't want to interact with my game data, man. That's funny. Yeah, don't bother me. I'm interacting over here. <laughs> Dude, I'll, I'll be on later. I, I, I'm interacting. Oh, it's, it's interesting hearing your guys' take on it. That's all. I, and I agree. It is, it is interesting. I think if I didn't have a PlayStation 3, I would love to go to somebody's house and have them show me around their virtual home and show me their trophy case of achievements. And then I'm going to go home and play some games. Next topic.
Have you guys seen that uh, new guitar game for the DS? It originated as a Japanese guitar game called Hit Uteru DS Guitar MO6. MO? Don't ask, dude. It's a Japanese title. It's not supposed to make sense. Ubisoft is going to bring it over here and call it Jam Sessions. And it's actually kind of unique in that when you... The way you play it is the touchpad is a, uh, a strumming string, and you use the control pad to form a chord, and then you change the direction on the control pad and strum the string to form the chords. And I think you can do eight chords. I know you can do four. I think you can push in the angles and do the other ones. If you could do one, you could do all the Nirvana songs, pretty much. <laughs> e, G, D, G. <laughs> e minor. D, G. <laughs> So it's not even a competitor to the Guitar, guitar Hero franchise. It's not meant to be a competitor to the Guitar Hero, but it is a very cool-looking game. It, it, it apparently is very popular over in Japan this fall, I believe, is the release date. I wonder what, how long it's going to be until someone gets this DS guitar game and it's like some band has the DS player in it. Yes. That would be cool. That was the joke on uh, Joystick, was that the mini-bosses will, will come out without instruments, but will bust out their DSs and play this <laughs> tune. It'd be kind of hard to look cool on stage, you know, like biting your lip. Mm, 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 mm. Or the big Norwegian death metal guy with his corpse paint comes out with his spiked armor, and he's like, ding, ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. Next job. And once again, the legendary MC frags a lot, better known as Tom. I just wanted to come on this week's show to give a shout out to all my PC playing brothers. We are, after all, the superior race. Don't let those council Neanderthals get you down, guys. <laughs> Asamalaka Mika, brothers. I think it's Asalamalekum, actually. I thought it was Mele Kaliki Maka. That's the place to be. Yeah. Next topic. From NetDevil, creators of Bob's favorite auto assault, they are bringing out a massively multiplayer online Legos game. They haven't given any details yet, but come on, it's a Legos game. Who wouldn't want a Legos game? Hell yeah, dog. Well, I would imagine that would be something like Second Life. I yes. mean, it lends itself nicely to be a little Legos character, and you go around building brick homes and but, in your virtual world. But they're but they're targeting this at children, at least according to the company. Yes, yeah, so they're targeting it at children, but I'm if this thing drops and it's, it's building crap, I'm going to Damn, I'm going in there. Should be in there with the kids. I don't care. I love Legos. I can see that. All the all the MMOs are built around fantasy worlds or science fiction worlds, and so it's kind of the teen, the twenty something crowd. I could see that. It's like, hey, let's see if this thing works with the preteens and the elementary imagine, school kids. Imagine being able to build with Legos and never running out of pieces. I was gonna say real quick, although speaking of trademarks and IP, how freeform if they were to allow you to build things, who would stop someone from building a, you know, Gears of War thing. Or, or building like a Counter-Strike map inside the Lego's world. Oh, yeah. What you're yeah. saying. Traipsing yeah. over IP would then... I wonder how they enforce that same kind of policy over in Second Life land, where someone might make like some kind of Marvel t-shirt. What know? if they took the Magic the Gathering approach and you had to pay real-life money for your Legos? That would suck. That would drive me right away from it. I would not... I would say screw it at that point. Just curious. I mean, if you the game get... itself was free, but, you know, and, and signing up a la Magic... You get a free uh, pat starter pack of Lego blocks. I would be horribly screwed up because I could get my starter and I bought two boosters and I've built a car, but I don't have any wheels. So I'm spamming the auction house for you know need four tires, need four can't get to school. Yeah, but you know what? I could see them. I would almost see that being more natural way to have a Lego MMO than a monthly fee because if it's just a flat monthly fee and I could create as many instances of Lego pieces as I possibly can. I would just flood the server with Lego pieces. But that's that just me. Be, that would be cool. <laughs> you're saying you would purposely disrupt the Lego service, is what you're saying. Well, yeah. How can you not? I mean, I would want to build the biggest Lego <laughs> phallus. Lego. I, I can. Yeah. You're like assaulting, you're assaulting like Aunt Jemima or something here. This is Lego. It's a wholesome thing. You don't, no one hacks Lego, Tom. Kids everywhere are just like, what's this giant statue in the middle of town? And Tom's like, oh, it'll be ready soon. <laughs> I, have to keep up our, I have to keep up our street cred for griefing on MMOs. I mean. Next topic. Xbox Live stats. Since we have MS Zone Chris Paladino, he can comment a little on these stats that were released for the Xbox Live service. So I guess you guys are ahead of schedule in terms of number of users 
You had yeah. planned at June 07 to be at 6 million users, but now, right now, you're at 6 million users. So, so to take a step back, and I'll proceed this with, I'm on the community team. I'm not really in charge of things like the numbers, but I was commenting to some of my coworkers, who decides, I think we will have X number of people by this month. Like, isn't that just very, I don't know. It's you know, monkeys throwing darts at a dartboard. I think the, the point of that is 6 million people is a heck of a lot of people to be on live. Uh, well, I mean, I think that one of the more in interesting uh, stats I heard, 2 million voice and text messages every day. So you have 6 million people, and these people are using the service. One in three of them is sending a message each day. I mean, it, but on average, you're getting a, a message for every three people. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, people aren't just buying the service and then, you know, letting it stagnate and roll over and not using it. They're using it. They're using it every day. One in three of them is sending a message every day. That's pretty cool. So let's hit some of the stats here. So if you look cumulative uh, total hours spent online, it's 2.3 billion hours have spent, and that's equates to about 260,000 years. Is this since the inception of live? or is this I believe it's since the inception of the original live. That's a lot of hours. You know, could have invented a, a, a way to, you know, inhabit Mars or something. Or you could have gained. 5 billion points have been activated on Xbox Live. Over 300 million achievements have been unlocked. And there's a cumulative gamer score of 7.5 billion. Yeah. I wonder what I can get for that in that whole Old Spice thing if I had 7.5 billion. <laughs> what level is that? <laughs> like, for that, you get, like, Ecuador. <laughs> that, that's how <laughs> horrible it is. Country. For, for that much, Bruce Campbell comes to your house and, like, puts Old Spice on your neck for you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so much more insignificant now when I take the 7 billion and I divide that out so that I can know I'm point oh 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 four percent of the total gamer score population in the world. Next topic. Everybody here remember the Commodore 64? I do. Oh, yeah. I never had Auto one. Duel. You never I had one. Auto Duel on that like crazy. Well, guess what? The Commodore brand is coming back. As of the CE bit in mid-March, they're going to announce that the Commodore brand is coming back for gaming PCs. As a competitor to, like, Alienware. Yes, yes. That's uh. the idea here, is now they're going to be competing with the Alienwares, the Dell Gaming, the Voodoo. It's not going to be its own unique platform, but it's going to be its own brand of PC like you see in the back of gaming magazines. Who owns the rights to, to Commodore? I mean, who ended up buying that? Like, who is this Commodore. company? What's their background? The company's name is called Commodore Gaming. I don't know if it's exactly the same company, how many times they've changed hands, or anything like that. They probably just bought the rights to the name and said, hey, yeah. we'll get some street cred and it's like the new go Atari. build. Yeah. Yeah. How much if street cred do you get with a computer that hasn't been around for 20-some years? That's <laughs> the other thing, yeah. How many gamers now, how many young kids nowadays even know what a Commodore 64 is? Like, all the guys who are still playing Monkey Island are like, oh, Awesome! <laughs> I told you it was going to happen. It's the Commodore 128. I think that more competition for from a consumer standpoint is better because I can either get a Dell or an Alienware or a Falcon Northwest, or I, now I have another option in Commodore. Me personally, as a PC gamer, I would much rather build my own machine. Oh yeah, I mean the hardcore gamers always build their own. And that's my question: is these vendors have very high quality product? I hear all only good about people like Alienware as far as the quality of their their manufacturing. They do significant amounts of testing, and they can overclock it for you and set up so you know a relative noob or a parent can get a sweet pimped out machine. But you pay the the cost of. I think the hardcore gamer who is uh, thrifty or frugal will build their own. But if I was a hardcore gamer and had like an unlimited bank account, why well, build my own? Why well, can't just go to Alienware and buy the ultra water cooled SLI rig? Well, because it's fun to, to assemble your own PC. I mean, there's Have an enjoyment. Have you guys ever been to there. Alienware and like assemble the most expensive thing you could ever imagine? Always. I, I even put it in my cart. And I always imagine in the back of my head, like, that maybe there's somebody at Alienware that's sitting around watching these things go down and going, oh, God, yes. We're about to, s <laughs> we're about to sell the mother load. He's chanting in the background, buy, buy, buy. <laughs> Just put the credit card number in, dude. It's like $27,000 PC. I, I think the other audience, though, is that folks that who are, they're into gaming, but they don't have a lot of time, you know, the adult gamers, so... I'm okay with spending four grand for my computer or six or seven if I know I'm not going to get another one for a few years. Just let somebody who knows what they're doing put it together, overclock it, and just give me an Uber running machine that I can go ahead and throw my Battlefield 2 on and just jump in and start playing. Next topic. Harvard actually held a gaming event, and they called it Multiplayer 01. And they actually had some prizes. What's the goal? I mean, there's the robotic soccer tournament like that's Carnegie Mellon sponsors everyone. Dude, dude, they're actually playing like... Super Smash Brothers, Halo, StarCraft, Warcraft. It's a gaming competition. But is there some technical or research objective no, to this whole thing? No, 
just fun. to have fun, just to have fun, play games. Wow. So, at Harvard. So, so, so it wasn't Harvard University. It was a student organization from Harvard University. It's part of the Harvard Interactive Media Group, which is a Harvard sponsored club, which was started last fall. Okay, big deal. Big deal. <laughs> Hang on here. I'll tell you how these boys roll. These boys roll with four hundred dollars worth of prizes, including a Nintendo Wii hmm. and some free food. Who doesn't like the free food? <laughs> I just laugh because it's Harvard, and I'm not intelligent enough to attend Harvard. But I have this sort of no. Imaginary... It's not that you're not intelligent enough. You just don't have. Your parents didn't have enough money. Oh. Harvard is on this pedestal academically for me. The Harvards and the Yales and all these big places. That uh, it's funny that you know. They're this amazingly prestigious university, and we're giving away a Wii and free food, you know? Yeah, you would think this actually, this competition involved Harvard students, it involved MIT students. And here was a little quote from one of the actual guys who was in the tournament. I generally like console games because you play them with your friends, and you can punch them in the face when they beat you. It's a great way to get your competition out. That was better than the quote I expected. I was expecting, like, oh, crap, a six-pull Zerg rush, you know. <laughs> oh, crap, a six-Zergling rush. I remember May nights Tom yelled at when he was playing okay, StarCraft. so a six-pull yeah. rush is possible. Yeah. Next topic. Everybody here know who David Jaffe is? God of War. God of War creator, and actually creator of a new game called Calling All Cars for the uh, Sony PlayStation Network service, wherever their whole arcade scheme is like. I believe he did Twisted Metal as well. It's a little homage to Bob there. He actually had a game he talked about a long time ago called Project HL. It was a game where he wanted to really strike an emotional chord with the player. Talked about it for a while, and then it kind of like disappeared. Well, I guess he talked with Entertainment Weekly recently, and he talked a little bit about what the story was he had hoped Heartland would be. Heartland was the story of China invading America. You played a soldier debating whether to stay and fight for America or go AWOL to meet with your family. You had sequences where you'd go into homes and your commanding officer would tell you to shoot innocent Chinese Americans. It was very dark. It was meant to cause players to consider what it's like to live in America and be an American today. Wow. That's dark. Is the story here that a g video gamer was talking to Entertainment Weekly? I was surprised just That's by hearing I that. Gonna, I was just going to give kudos to Jaffe for getting into Entertainment Weekly. Oh, Jaffe is a very outspoken developer. He's, he's had some interviews where he's been a little over the top. Uh, in my small soapbox that I'm going to step on and then get off quickly is a lot of people don't think of video games as a real hobby. A lot of people don't think of video game journalism as a real form of journalism. When you have people giving interview, interviews in the Playboy Mansion while they're drunk, not the greatest, you know, not furthering the cause of video game industry. You know what I'm saying? I'm off my soapbox. I apologize. Video games are mainstream enough now where they're starting to be covered by places like Entertainment Tonight and, and MTV. It's not yet the intellectual side. You don't have much of a choice. You see fart jokes and you see top 10 gaming boobies. You don't see a serious intellectual discussion on virtual economies or trying to do real life taxes in a virtual economy. Well, I, I kind of had this same conversation with Michael Wolf about there is no Charlie Rose in the video game world. Someone who covers gaming in a in an intellectually people, stimulating way rather than well, just, just like uh, burping just, at you. I, th I think Jeff Keighley does a decent job at what he does in being a uh, non-fanboy, tries to get the intellectual side. Oh. Somebody who could talk about the development issues around building a game, talk about the cultural effect of gaming, talk about the economy of gaming without having to drag it down into, hey, let's get the frag dolls to interview in these tight pink t-shirts. Someone will emerge to be that voice. I mean, one thing is, you know, gaming, it is huge. It's bigger than movies. And, and, and we're going to, and my hope is that we create our own identity. We create our own kind of, of, of media. Uh, we don't need to emulate movies. You know, we need to do our own thing in our own way. I think a lot of this, like, independent media podcasting, I think a lot of the voices who are going to be, you know, the Charlie Roses, the, the Walter, Walter Mondales, or whatever, of the gaming world that, that are going to cover gaming, you know, they're, they're rising now. You know, they're emerging today. And, and to be fair, so are the Howard Stearns. And I'm not saying that there's no place for the Howard Stearns. Oh, there's place for, you know, hopefully there's place for, places for both. Yes, hopefully there's enough place where I can choose. Do I want high class? Do I want low yeah. class? Or do I want some sort of mixture where I can get the information and I can get a laugh or two out of it? 
you know, do I want a video specific thing where you're very dryly covering, you know, in a non-review style, or do I want something where I, somebody's going to yell at me about... Or something like us where we call each other idiots and we drag discussions right down to the gutter or, or turn everything into Asian jokes. Well, yeah. But at the same time, it's a, it's a condensed 30-minute <laughs> show and it's it's censored so that families could potentially listen to it when you're not screaming. Is yeah. there anybody who <laughs> listens to this show with their family? Please email us. I'd like to know. <laughs> I'm saying the, the opportunity exists, is what I'm getting at. Next topic. Unreal Tournament for the PlayStation 3. They are going to have full mouse and keyboard support right out of the box. Really interesting. So they're conceding that the gamepad is not the best? They are giving you the option. You can either play with the six-axis controller, or you'll be able to play with a mouse and keyboard. So I have, I have a couple concerns with this. One of the things that I feel is compelling about PC FPS over playing something on the console is that I'm so close to the action on my PC. I'm sitting two feet away from the monitor. So now I have a keyboard and mouse, and yes, the, my mouse is a preferred input device for first-person shooters because it, it feels like a gun in my hand. So, so kudos to Sony for that, at least. I'm curious to see how it works. I'm not convinced because I still like being close to the action on a are PC. Pe are people going to complain if they're using a gamepad on a yeah, Sony? Yeah, that's one of the questions here is, do you feel you should see in your multiplayer gaming what your opponents are playing with. yeah that's a very good question and you know this goes back to kind of the, the shadow run controversy that's going on right now so uh last the week event and last they week. showcased shadow run and they had guys from pc gamer magazine playing oxm they had the oxm guys using game pads and the pc magazine guys using mouse and keyboard they said they couldn't tell in game who was using what that it was pretty seamless I think fine-tuned sniping, though, you've got to have a... I mean, a mouse will take a console any day. I mean, there's just no way... Yes, I would tend to agree, to. yeah. And I will, th I will third that statement of, of agreeance. Well, now the question is, is should we, should we know who's on, on a gamepad and know who's on a mouse? I think you should only because so that the, 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 the con gamepad players know who the real... Who owned them? <laughs> who, the, oh, no. who the superior gamers are in, in the game. Come on, now. Uh, I don't think it matters. Why does it matter? If you're good at a game, you're good at a game. If if I choose to prefer... Because I want the console people to know they're lesser species. Are you like little mini Hitler over here? Like <laughs> No, little mini Napoleon. <laughs> so it's just purely an ego thing. It's a it's a complete arrogance factor. It's not an arrogance factor. It's it's everyone knowing their place. And the, and the PC <laughs> oh people God. just happen Dear to be at the Lord. top of that pyramid. Tom, I never thought anybody would use a mouse as a badge of honor. <laughs> what a dumb thing to use as your like Cool card. Your game. It's the only thing I have. Don't take that away from me. <laughs> Next topic. We played Battlefield 2 today at work. We're getting some stuff ready for a speech next week. Peter Moore is going to have a, and we have a killer PC. And uh, my counterpart is a gamepad player. Tony Hines plays console. So I was playing with the mouse and keyboard in Battlefield 2, and I'm like, dude, check this. Look at how easy it is that I can zoom in and, and snipe somebody right in the face. And I think it's a, just a matter of personal preference. What does it matter? If he would rather use a gamepad and I would rather use a mouse, cool, go for it. And I would prefer to use a mouse and a keyboard, at least a mouse. I'm, I'm not as convinced about a keyboard. The reason that the keyboard is is because it's a it's an on or off. I can walk forward or I don't walk forward. There's no slowly walking I can walking walk forward. forward a little bit. What about a pressure-sensitive keyboard where you could just, if you hit the W a little bit, it'll go, you know. Why are you trying oh. to improve upon perfection? Yeah. WASD is, I can't fathom any other way to move around a virtual I, and, environment. And now I will say I'm right there with you with WASD. I, I love the PC inputs. What I am also saying, though, is I can't move as well on a keyboard as you can with a gamepad. Can I can it? still navigate the environment better because I can aim where the, my direction much more easier with the mouse than I can with the right analog stick. Right, right, when right. Was the last, when was the last time that moving extremely slowly like scored you an extra kill, actually? Counter-Strike. Yeah, there are games that, I mean, especially crouching. Crouching is a big one to stabilize your aim and stuff. But what I'm saying is if, I, if I'm trying to follow a very specific, you know, jaggedy line, let's say, it's easier to do with a mouse because you're really using your mouse as your level of aim left to right. You're using the speed, though, is what I'm having the problem with. The speed and the strafing left and right are easier to do for me, and they're more precise. With, yeah, I mean, that's the whole point of analog, whereas we have kind of this digital control where you're either moving at normal speed or you're holding shift and moving at so walking you're, speed. you're opposed, then, to the idea of improving on, even if you took your WASD and you made it like, Doc was saying where you make it pressure With sensitive. pressive sensitive keys. You're you're not liking that at all. You're just opposed to. Uh, I'm skeptical. Okay, so what you're not saying then is you're not saying 
you give hands down the keyboard the the, the movement nod over a gamepad's movement nod. No, I do give the keyboard a movement nod over the gamepad's nod because I hate I not only do I hate the right analog to look around, I hate the left analog. <laughs> My God, you have a lot of hate issues. You did though. You did object. concede speed and precision of movement to a gamepad. Well, no, 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 we're not talking about precision of movement. We're talking about precision of speed. We're talking, it's a, it's a velocity issue. Do you care that you have mo control over how slowly you're moving? But I think the answer is yes. Okay. Because in Counter-Strike, I either have to... I, I don't know, you're stupid, shut up. ...or to crouch. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, either have to hold down shift to, to walk, or I have to hit the crouch button to slow down to get my aim more stable, whereas a gamepad, I can just tilt forward slightly. You get the same effect, right? <sighs> No? I suppose you do, but I, 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 fine. <laughs> I'm still going to snipe your ass off with my mouth. Next topic. Is that a company called Emotive Systems has announced a new control interface for PCs. They are creating a system where it will be able to process your conscious thoughts and your non-conscious emotions. Yeah, isn't this for like paraplegic patients? No, no. This is going to actually wear this as a helmet. And it's going to read your brain waves <laughs> and your so face. PC players need a big nerdy helmet to wear. <laughs> <laughs> you can register your brain waves and your facial patterns and relay that through a USB interface to the PC. And the goal is like to go along with handwriting interfaces, voice recognition. Now you're going to have a new way of interfacing in terms of brain waves where you actually think and visualize what you want to do. Surf porn Basically, with that on my head. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like every 18, whatever the stat is, every 18 seconds the characters start masturbating. <laughs> You're nerdy enough when you know mom walks out the old, and now you have this big helmet on. Ooh, what? <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't like that. That's that's across that line. That's the Terminator Three. That's Skynet. That's not something I'm I'm up for. I'm when I think hard about it, I don't like the fact that microwaves are constantly flying around through the air. I mean, let alone the fact that I'm going to be putting a helmet on. I mean, it's one of my feet going to grow green and fall off in ten years. You have no idea this is going to do to you. Everyone's going to. They're just. It's like some subliminal message. Some company is behind this, and everyone's yeah. going to just buy Twinkies every day because it's like <laughs> they're going to in your in your thought process. And we're not even going to realize it. Is that, is yeah. it. No one will even bring it up. If I got one, I'd like to put it on my parents' dog and. See what like it does. And there you have it, video game show episode number twenty-eight for Friday, March 9th, two thousand and seven. Any ham sandwiches for the people in the world, gentlemen? Yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a stand here. I am going to give a ham sandwich to Sony because because they're. I mean, this is the first time that they've had a press release that the churn in general afterwards wasn't holy cow what a horrible wreck so so i i gotta give him a hand sandwich i, I want to give one to kotaku because i know i think that they did a great job of just kind of saying okay no problem you don't like us we're gonna go ahead and keep reporting our stuff and you can have back your ps3 or whatever we'll take the general information that everyone else gets they were able to stick to their loosely you know journalistic values which i really respect for your comments queries problems or concerns Email us at VGS at GamerCastNetwork.com or call us at 320-300-GAME. It is a normal long-distance phone call and all standard fees apply. Or Skype us at Video Game Show. And there you have it, people. Good night. Peace. Phil, anything you want to throw in? Um... I thought of something, but I forgot it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so late. A ham sandwich for Phil's memory. Uh, hey. Ham sandwich for Phil being up at 12.30. Wait, it's 12.30 for me, too. And Chad. Ham sandwich for Chad.